So hi, I'm Amber from Influencer Updates on Instagram and tonight I'm going to be updating you on three big influencer stories for the week, being Ashley Bynes hospitalised for losing her sight, Matt Sikowski's social media hiatus and Sky Wheatley has captivated the nation. <laughs> and then I will be answering all of your questions here. So if you can just comment your questions down the bottom in the comment box. I did do a QA and a this week as well. So maybe people have less questions than usual, but we will see. So I'll get started on Ashley Bynes' story. So as I mentioned, she was hospitalized this week for losing her sight. So I've written notes here four days ago. She lost her eyesight in both of her eyes and it was for the third time that week. So she went to a doctor and he said, you need to go to the hospital straight away. They took it very seriously. She got some eye tests and they came back all clear. They then gave her a CT scan and they found a small brain aneurysm that was four by four millimeters. So very, very small, but they concluded that it was not related to the loss of eyesight. So they kept her in overnight and said that they want to do an MRI on her in the morning. In the, uh, that night, she was on TikTok and she was talking about ordering her breakfast for the next morning. And this is where everybody, this post kind of went a bit viral from her because she was talking about the breakfast options and she was flicking through like the cereals, the breads and saying that everybody, everything is just so unhealthy and being a hospital, they really need to be like feeding their patients healthy food because... Healthy food means healthy people. And she was saying that out of everything on the menu, she was ordering a banana. And she stressed that she believes that they should be serving smoothies and fresh fruit and bone broth. So the response to this, sorry, I've changed subjects very quickly there. Like I've, I'll go back to her medical things soon. But the response to this food situation was that she was entitled and she doesn't understand that, you know, hospitals are underfunded and nurses are overworked but I really I'm actually on her side here I'm controversial I know but I don't believe she was complaining she wasn't saying oh whinge whinge like she was saying I think this would be better for everybody and she wasn't saying she wants you know five course meals like a smoothie is literally just fruit and milk and yogurt blended up it's kind of actually the ingredients like they did have yogurt and fruit and milk on the menu and it would just be them put in a blender I get that it could possibly be more work though and bone broth I don't really personally see the benefits of that I don't think scientifically there are benefits but yeah I'm kind of on her side there that maybe they could offer something a bit more healthy but personally I think that you know the cereals and breads and all that are all part of a healthy balanced diet but yes it did get a lot of people upside with Ashy. So yes, yeah, she did get an MRI the next morning. Again, they found nothing and overall they diagnosed her with stress. So yeah, she's going to be implementing a whole heap of things to reduce her stress levels, like with her businesses and things. So yeah, hopefully that will mean her eyesight, she doesn't lose her eyesight again because that is so, so scary. And she said she was crying so much, like it was very stressful for her, which probably isn't ideal because stress caused it in the first place. <laughs> The second update I'm going to talk about is Matt Sikowski, so Tammy Hembro's fiance. He has been on a social media hiatus. So last week on probably like Thursday in, what's it called, subscriptions <laughs> in, to my subscribers, I posted somebody's comment to me that something was going on with Matt and Tammy. They weren't behaving their normal way that they would online. Usually they're very over the top and lovey-dovey and they're very like affectionate and they comment on all each other's posts, but something wasn't quite right. And I posted about that. And then in the next day or two, an, a text came up on Tea Time Facebook group and it was like a screenshot of Matt. I mean, this is all unverified, I suppose. He hasn't confirmed it's all him, but... I'll get into that. So this this screenshot was Matt apparently replying to an Instagram person, like a girl, her photo, like her pinned post. He wasn't following the girl apparently, but he replied to her pinned post saying, "Do you have a boy? Do you still have a boyfriend?" And apparently this was at three in the morning. And then she wrote back at about five a.m. saying, "Yes, why is that? Are you still marrying Tammy?" And then at about eight thirty in the morning, he replied saying, "Interesting. Yes, I am." And that's all we know. We don't know like any context before the text. We don't know any context after the text. We haven't heard from Matt and Tammy about the situation, not directly anyway, um, since it all happened. Like Matt has just gone completely off social media, apart from Glamour in the grid, Glamour on the grid. He did post that, but I guess that's a little bit different as that was sort of like a work commitment. He was probably there as a work thing and 
maybe there was something that he had to post and he was there with Tammy and they were putting on a united front. They haven't confirmed or denied the messages are true. And then three nights ago on Snapchat, he was in the background of one of her videos, like she was filming her food and you could hear his voice in the background. Two nights ago, somebody messaged me saying that they were at the cinema and then they had spotted Matt and Tammy there together. So they are very much still together. We don't need to worry about that. But it is really unfortunate because they were living a fairy tale. Everybody was watching them like, wow, like they, they met and they got engaged so quickly and they just seemed so happy together. And it was just such a fairy tale. And I feel like millions of people were waiting for Matt to F up. And this has happened and I'm so disappointed. I feel like no matter what the context was of those messages, it shouldn't have happened. Like he shouldn't have been messaging that to a girl or a boy, but I mean, like it was a girl, but he shouldn't be messaging that to anybody, like knowing that millions of people are watching him, even if they weren't. But yeah, it's really unfortunate. And everybody is feeling so sorry for Tammy, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they do speak about it. It's now been eight days. So no, cause it was Thursday morning. It's been nine days and yeah, we haven't heard from either of them about it. Tammy has been wearing her rings on and off on her page and everybody keeps messaging me like, oh, her rings are on today, her rings are off today. But some of the pictures are reversed, so you can't really tell what finger they're on. And I think it's just like a passive sort of way of confusing all of us. Maybe she is liking all of like the engagement it's getting and maybe she's playing into that. I'm not really sure, but she's not posting him either. So I think that... The fact he's gone off social media for nine days post this scandal, it to me, it makes him look guilty. And that's why I really just want him to talk about it. It's so frustrating. And he cancelled his podcast this week. His podcast with Anna McAvoy is called Where's Your Head At? And they normally do a weekly episode and it was cancelled for the week. And it has to be because of this situation, in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, that's the update on that. So yeah, it's really sad. I, I think about it way more than I should. Like I shouldn't care, but I just, I really, really want the fairy tale ending for Tammy. I think so many people do. And yeah, we're just hoping that she still gets that. Um, okay, and the third update I've got here is Sky Wheatley captivating the nation. So she recently has started on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, Australia, and she has gone in as a mega influencer. So we all knew that she was going in because we could tell that it was her. We could tell like the photo of the back of her, like waving her hair around. <laughs> we could tell it was her, but um, it was still exciting for the confirmation and seeing her on our screens. And I feel like her introduction, like when she first came on in that tiny little silver skirt and tiny little silver top, maybe it was white, but it was shiny. <laughs> and she just looked like such a bimbo. But I love, I love the bimbo look. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, <laughs> but a lot of people were judging it as a bad thing. But then realizing she's just so endearing. She was just such a hype girl. She's like hyping everybody up. She's like, ah, oh, Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> she is just the best. And she's completely carrying the show, by the way. It is the Sky Wheatley show. Everybody just loves her. She is the first person who did a challenge and she had to go into like this jail, they called it, and or prison. And she had to like, get her way out of the prison. There was one point where she was swimming with crocodiles and I was just holding my breath watching it. I don't know why, but it was just so full on and so scary to watch. And then when she got out, she was like crying and saying like she did it for her boys and she also did it for herself. And it was just so emotional and so cute. And everybody just loved her after that moment. There was also an incident with Candace Warner. So all of the celebrities had to give up their contraband and Sky had snuck a lip gloss in. I'm under the impression that all of these celebrities are told they have to pick an item of contraband to sneak in because every year they all do it. And it's like all part of the storyline and it's all funny. So yeah, she chose a lip gloss and all of the celebrities had to forego their contraband. Sky did not. She said, oh no, I don't have anything. But Candace, who is good friends with her in the jungle, she actually dobbed her in. And Sky complained like, Candace, you've thrown me under the bus. I would never throw anyone under the bus like that. But then the next day after sleeping on it, Sky actually apologized to Candace and said, you know, I'm sorry. I said you were throwing me under the bus. I can see now that you were just looking out for everybody and you were also looking out for me. And, you know, I'm sorry I said that. And then Candace said, I'm sorry I called you selfish. <laughs> and um, controversially, I'm actually on Candace's side here. Everybody's going to hate me. I still love Sky and, like, I don't think she did anything wrong, but I'm on Candace's side that she dobbed 
Sky in and said, you know, Sky actually has a lip gloss. I think, again, it's all just part of the storyline. And yeah, I mean, that's just what you're supposed to do. Give up the contraband. Otherwise, the group might have been punished with like no food. Like everybody might have had no food for the day or something. So yeah, I don't think Candace did anything wrong. But I do think it's wrong, like how aggressive the fight was kind of thing. Like, I don't think it needed to blow up into what it was. And Sky clearly got very emotional and yeah, I don't know. I feel like Sky's like sort of a lot more soft than Candace, whereas Candace is more of a hard ass. So it makes you feel more sorry for Sky. But yeah, I don't think, I don't really think either of them did anything wrong. But let me know what you think. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I've barely taken a breath. <laughs> I'm going to read the comments now and answer your questions. Oh, somebody today, they spent the day racing to the shops. Oh, no, they're racing to the shops tomorrow to find some Easter kids pajamas. Okay, I'll give you a little financial trick with this one. <laughs> I bought my kids non-Easter pyjamas. So they're still new pyjamas, but you can wear them all year long because Easter pyjamas, it's weird to wear them like in a few months' time. I suppose it depends what print you get. There's some really cute Miffy ones in Cotton On, so Miffy the bunny, and they're Easter because it's a bunny, but they're also like not Easter. <laughs> Poor Ashy, I don't know if we should be discussing health issues and learn from Princess Kate. Interesting because I disagree. I believe that Ashy has given us every single detail of her hospital visit. She has like willingly given us those details. It's not like we're prodding her and saying, give, 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 like we did with Kate and like trying to like out Ashy or anything. I think it's a very different situation. Tammy just posted a pic without her ring. Maybe she just got it off. Uh, yeah, this is what she's doing. She's posting pictures and stories with it on and then with it off. Like she was posting her signing today, her book signing, and she had her ring on. So I really don't think a ring is like a indicator of whether someone has broken up or not. Like she's, yeah, there's been plenty of times where she's like, you know, with her children and she might have it off. But I don't know. I, I just don't think we can base their whole relationship on whether or not she's wearing a ring. <laughs> but it's it's a very hot topic. Everybody loves to talk about whether her ring is on or off. Sofa Dofa is going to New York City on a brand trip. Any thoughts on which brand? Huh. I was watching her stories today, actually, and saw that she's going to New York and she was showing, like, what she's packing. I'm always shocked by how much stuff influencers take with them. I get that they work overseas and they've got to do, like, different outfits every day and, like, po probably multiple outfits per day and they've got to, like, shoot content and stuff. But, man, they pack a lot of stuff. <laughs> and thoughts on which brand? Well... I don't know. I know there's a whole heap of girls in LA at the moment with By Bambi, the clothing brand. So Sam Guggenheimer is there. Obviously, her and Sofa are not friends anymore, so they would not be there together. But in New York City, I really don't know. Benefit just did a trip to the Formula One. So, I mean, it's possible they are sending her on another trip or maybe that's silly to think they would send her on another trip so soon. I'm not sure. We'll see if anyone in the comments knows. Somebody's racing to the shops for discounted Easter chocolates. I don't think you'll find them yet. I think that they get discounted on the Monday because a lot of people buy them on Easter Sunday. Even, tomorrow's only Saturday. <laughs> what else? As she was complaining about the doctor waking her up at 1am to examine her. It's a hospital, not a hotel, mate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's true. It's a bit of a silly complaint, but at the same time, I complained about that to my friends and family when I was in hospital. Like when I'd just given birth to both of my children, I swear they woke me up every hour to monitor myself and my baby. And I get that they have to, and I'm very appreciative that they did. But at the same time, I'm just like, oh, I can. Like, really? <laughs> it is very frustrating when you're trying to sleep. Someone here is saying that nurses don't have time to make smoothies for people at request each day. And I totally agree with that. 100% agree with that. But I do not believe that nurses do the catering in a hospital. I believe that there would be a separate catering staff, but I am potentially wrong. I do not have not worked in a hospital. I actually really liked the food in hospital, by the way. I really love the surprise element that you like get a meal and you don't know what it is. I did order meals, but nothing was remotely like what I had ordered. But yeah, I think it's really fun, but I'm not a fussy eater. I think any meal that I don't have to cook is a good meal. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people saying about Tammy wearing no ring. 
people here complaining about food when we have Medicare slash almost free healthcare in Australia. Yeah, that is the point I agree with. Like, we really shouldn't be complaining about it when the hospital food is free. Like, we are so lucky they even provide us food and they provide a very big variety. I guess they've got to cater to a lot of, like, allergens. What happened to Ruby Tuesday Matthews' podcast? Well, I mean, she got a lot of momentum. She was filming quite a lot of episodes. She was filming with the Fit as FK guy. And I think that, I think someone asked, like, when are you going to do another episode? And she actually tagged him and was like, come on, like, when are we going to make one? So I think that she's sort of just lost a bit of momentum, got a bit busy, but I think it will come back for sure. The Ashley Vine's food thing has been has gone viral. Like everybody's obsessed with it. Why can't we aim higher with our food in hospital? Japan has nutritious food in hospital. Why can't we try to improve? That is a very good point. Like we can always improve on everything. I wish Matt and Anna had have done a podcast that was due this week to address it. I totally agree. I really think it's getting too late now for Matt to address it. It's making him look more guilty. Everybody. I feel like it could have been shut down so quickly if they had have just like got on and addressed it and like provide put on like a united front. But no, they haven't. And I don't know. Like there must be some strategy behind this. I don't know what it is. Someone's here for the very first time for a live chat. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I've put all my live chats on YouTube, by the way. You can watch them anytime. And I always put like captions really big captions with all the timestamps. So if you want to like skip to that spot, you can just click on the blue timestamp. Also, I had lots of new people sign up to subscription this week because I did like a Q&A and put like a little ad in there, a little bit of self-promotion. So thank you everybody who signed up, if any of you are watching now. I love when new people sign up because I am just so proud of the content that I make and I really feel that it is worth $4.49 per month, which is 15 cents a day. And yeah, I'm really proud of it. And I love when more people are able to enjoy it. There's a lot of people on tonight, actually. I thought it might be a bit quiet being a public holiday. Lockie would be struggling with the kids and renovations. Anyone thinks, anyone think he looks sad in the vlogs? So this is about Sky Wheatley's boyfriend, Lockie. Uh, yeah, I mean, anybody would be struggling renovating a house while they have two children. And at the moment, Sky is away in the jungle. But I imagine he wouldn't be renovating while she's away because that would be pretty full on. But maybe he is. And yeah, I think that he does look sad in vlogs. But I think that's just his personality. Like, he's not going to put on a happy face just for the vlogs. Like, you know when people go to take a photo or take a video and you might just be like, you know, chilling on the couch like this. And then someone goes to take a photo and you're like... <laughs> like it's just natural to put on an act for photos and videos but I think that he's just like used to her filming all the time and he's like I'm not going to put on an act for that and it's not that he's sad he's just not putting on an act <laughs> someone's saying they should call me Miss Controversial yeah tonight I've had like two opposite opinions to the majority it's not even that I have opposite opinions I just sort of like to see things from multiple viewpoints I think that every opinion can be right and wrong. It just sort of depends how you want to look at it, which annoys a lot of people. I get that. It really annoys people that I sit on the fence and suck up to influencers, whatever. But that's okay. I don't mind. That's just me. Ooh, Kate here is saying welcome to Portland. Thank you. I actually grew up in Portland until I was like 18, I think. And yeah, my mum still lives here. My nan still lives here. And yeah, come here all the time. Jada Tunchi tags nothing as gifts and is getting everything for free for her baby. Really frustrating as a pregnant mama. Yeah, so I did actually speak about that this week in the Q&A, like the public Q&A. A lot of people have this opinion that they get really frustrated with influencers getting free gifts for their baby because babies are so expensive. But at the same time, it's just a marketing thing. Like if you see a baby bunting ad on TV, for example, Channel 10 is getting paid, you know, $10,000 or whatever for that ad. Whereas Jade Tunchi is getting a free pram and maybe like $8,000 payment. Like it's still just a marketing spend. But yeah, it does hit a lot more close to home because it's somebody that you relate to. I suppose like we relate to these influencers. We want to like replicate their lives. And yeah, it does hurt that we feel that like they could seemingly afford that pram and we cannot. And then they get it for free. 
and we have to like get a second job basically to afford a pram these days. Do you think the honeymoon phase is over for Tammy and Matt and she's seeing his flaws now? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I do think the honeymoon phase is probably over. Like it does end for everybody eventually. Like it was a big, big fairy tale and now the fairy tale has been tarnished. But I don't think that they'll like not come back from this or anything. I think they'll be totally fine. But yeah, the honeymoon phase has been tarnished, unfortunately. Emotional sleep deprived ep Indy Clinton with Ben. Yeah, so Indy Clinton's podcast, Sleep Deprived, she interviewed her husband this week. I personally found the episode incredibly boring because I already knew all that stuff about Ben. I know, like, you know, approximately how old he is and that they got married five years ago, but it seems that a lot of people didn't know that stuff. Maybe I followed Indy for a lot longer than what she's been famous for on TikTok. I think that might be the case. But um, I feel like they just spoke about parenting a lot and I found that really boring. Even though I am a parent, I don't know. It just wasn't like juicy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the juiciest bit was definitely their age gap. So Indy is only 26, which surprises a lot of people being that she does have three children and Ben is, well, Facebook says he's 38, but LinkedIn says he's 42. So I think he's actually 42. So that is a 16 year age gap, which is a lot considering they met when she, Indy was only 21, but you know, it has worked out for them. They've now got three children, they're married, they live together. So yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, it was a little bit emotional when he was complimenting her a lot on how good of a mum she is and everything. Like that was really nice to hear because she was saying he's never actually said that stuff to her before. So I was really happy for her with that. Thoughts on the Shameless podcast who apologise for their treatment of Princess Kate? I mean, I don't know. I just am not interested in the royals. I get that Princess Kate has been like this big thing lately, but I seriously do not care about the royals. Like I tried to, I lived in London for a bit and I was like, right, like London, I'm, this is my time. I'm going to get into the royals, but I just can't. Like I went to Buckingham Palace and that was cool, but like I just can't get into it, unfortunately. But I'm apologizing for their treatment of Princess Kate. I kind of think they had to. Like yeah, everybody was apologising for it. Lauren Curtis was apologising for it. Blake Lively, the American celebrity who's friends with Taylor Swift, she was apologising for it. So I imagine they were just, like they were jumping on the Princess Kate trend, they were jumping on the apology trend. People saying here that they love the Indy Clinton podcast, so that's really good. Shani Grimmond is going on a trip with a clothing label. I haven't seen that, but I wonder if it's the same trip that Sofa Dofa's going on to New York City. Interesting. Yeah. Beginning Boutique might be the brand that's going to America. Hmm. We will have to wait and see. Oh, sorry, I'm so behind with the comments, aren't I? Because this is stuff I spoke about probably like 10 minutes ago. Normally I only talk for 20 minutes. Follow the fish partner, Chloe, super pregnant and still flying all over the world. Do you think she'll make it back to Oz for the birth in time? Uh, yeah, I do, because there are definitely rules, like laws around flying while pregnant and international flights, you can't fly at like more than 28 weeks pregnant or something. So I'm sure she's staying within those laws and her doctor would be clearing the flight because once you hit like, I don't know, 26 weeks or something, you actually need to get a doctor's clearance to fly. Like they have to confirm that there's no complications and things like that that might induce an early labour. Oh, sorry. Um, someone saying Tammy has deleted photos of her and Matt together. I don't know about that. I can't confirm that. Have you looked into Tash Oakley's always changing accent? Um, I have recently because someone messaged me about it and, yeah, like I was listening to her and she sounded american i think it was but yeah she does have a constantly changing accent but she is australian living in america so maybe that's why i'm not sure what nationality her partner is maybe that has something to do with it as well <laughs> but it is quite funny to watch her stories so tash oakley is her name what else have i got someone's telling me that i'm the only person they subscribe to love that thank you <laughs> i've noticed everybody else charges so much more as well they all charge at least seven dollars 99 and i feel like that's getting a bit expensive like you're not netflix. you're not netflix <laughs> what else i'm just trying to catch up with everything but 
Can we add Sophie Guidel into the chat? Where is she? Totally MIA. She has a YouTube series now and she's released two episodes. They've both been very short episodes. The second episode was her son Ryder. It was all about him talking about Sophie. So he was saying, you know, she's such a great mum and the most sad he's ever seen her was when she lost Pixie and that, you know, she just stayed in bed for months and now she's like getting her mojo back and yeah, I don't know. It was kind of, I feel like she was interviewing him. Like you could hear her voice behind the camera. And I sort of was wondering like if she was feeding him lines because he spoke like just so highly of her and just said all the right things. It was really cute to watch though. It was very nice what he was saying. Where did the rumor about celeb spell check being Keith Urban come from? I don't know, but people have been commenting it on my lives as long as I can remember. And I don't even find it funny anymore because I've heard it so many times, but everybody finds it hilarious. And obviously he's not. This is my tip. I've been told recently that Winnie Blues, she's on Instagram, Winnie Blues. She now lives in Sydney. I've been told that she's celeb spell check. She used to live in Melbourne, but she moved to Sydney. I don't know six months ago, a year ago. And I'm wondering if that's like when Celeb Spellcheck stopped posting because she moved to Sydney. Dunno, dunno. Oh, my sister's waving, so hi. This was actually my sister's artwork she bought this years ago and now my mum has it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. I really need to sign off. Emmy Lou update any news on her boyfriend no news on her boyfriend but the update is that she this week was talking about how you know um tattle their forums how horrible that they are being to her and how they're following her and taking photos of her and things like that and that she's got a cyber security team onto them I would love if she had a cyber security team onto them it would be absolutely hilarious if all of these people's public identities were exposed but I don't believe she has a cyber security team. I think that that was just something she was saying. I'll always have a soft spot for Emmy Lou because I saw her like back in the day before she was famous, like at RMIT University, she used to film a TV show. She was obviously famous enough to have a TV show at the time though. And yeah, I just thought she was really sweet. And I know she's had a lot of controversies, but so have all the influencers and that's what makes them interesting. <laughs> Laura Henshaw copying hate and backlash for TikToks and posts with her husband, Dalton. <laughs> she posts the funniest things about him. She posted the other day that he was packing for their holiday, or they were packing for their holiday, and she said to him, oh, hey, could you please put our toiletries in your suitcase? Her, her toothbrush, it was, and his toothbrush. Anyway, she opened up his suitcase, and he had packed them in his shoes. Literally, her toothbrush was just open in his shoe. It's so foul, but, oh, my gosh, it was funny. And yeah, she's posted a few other things like about their sex life and yeah, a bit controversial sort of things, but I think it's funny. I think it's funny. Is my shirt Ralph Lauren? I want it. Well, no, thank you for thinking that. That's the second compliment I've got on this dress today. I got a compliment in real life, but um, it's actually a dress, so... Yes. Oh gosh, almost showed a bit too much then. <laughs> um, it's actually from Target. And if you are going to get it from Target, you have to go down two sizes. So I'm normally a 14. This is a size 10. So it is very, very big. But yes, $70 at Target. Bargain. <laughs> yeah, someone here is saying you can tell with Sophie Guidel and Son Ryder, that YouTube interview I was talking about, that he has a lot of respect for his mum. I totally agree with that. You have such nice skin too. What moisturizer do you use? I did post that this week on my subscribe on my public Q and A. What skincare I use? So I basically use All Tribe skincare because my sister used to own it, but she sold the brand in August to another Australian company. And yeah, I use like all their like cleanser, moisturizer, vitamin C serum, and then I use the Natio SPF 50. That is the key. You need to use sunscreen every day. And then the Goldie B and a McAvoy her face tanning brand. I use that on my face every night to like tan it and make it look glowy. <laughs> Martha Kay and Raj, are they still friends? I don't think so. Like, I think if they were, they'd be posting together more because they used to be super tight. So I don't know what's going on there though. I think they're probably still friendly. Will Tammy and Matt take their relationship underground, underground now, do you think? Absolutely no way because that is their jobs. Like, this is so good for engagement. They're so lovey-dovey and I think that they will 
definitely keep their relationship very public. Amber, you seem a little fed up today. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I'm not sure why I would seem that way. Not sure, sorry, but yes, I'm okay. Will you put this up on YouTube tonight? No, because I don't have a computer here on my holidays and it's too much to type all the captions on my phone. I will be posting it on Sunday night. Tattle is going for the Outspoken Girls now for their podcast about Emmy Lou. Oh yeah, true. If you say anything positive about Emmy Lou, the Emmy Lou haters will come for you. It's happened to me before. <laughs> What else? Are Ashi and Nat still friends? Uh, I think that they are still friendly and probably still friends, but yeah, they don't really seem to spend a lot of time together on social media anymore. Maybe just, you know, growing apart a bit, doing their own thing. Gossip space isn't positive vibes. 90% of gossip, gossip pages lean left and are very toxic. I do agree with that. I do try to be different. I definitely make mistakes sometimes, but um, yeah, I very much try to make this a fan page. I created this because I am a fan of influencers, not a hater of influencers. And I feel that I, like with that whole lean left, I feel that a lot of criticism I get is that I sit in the middle. I'm not a lefty or a righty, like with politics or whatever. I just sit in the middle. Every time I do that quiz of like which party to vote for, I'm smack bang in the middle. I just can never make up my mind. <laughs> so funny. All right. Well, that's all the questions. So thank you all. If you tuned in for the full 32 minutes, well, you are just a true, a true friend. <laughs> thank you very much. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.